Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be talking about part numbers. So you've probably seen these as you've handled parts for your car, and uh, so today we're going to be talking about Ford's process and what the part numbers mean, give it a slight breakdown. Now this can be kind of confusing because there's numbers written all over these parts, and some of them are engineering numbers, some of them are for the service part number, and so uh, you kind of just have to look around until you find one that's similar to what you're looking for. Uh, so the first letter that comes up or number is going to designate the year that used to be the entire decade and then in 1999 they changed it and so um, that would be the year for the first one the next two number and letter that come together is going to be the model of the car so for example the mustang or the f-150 uh, after that you have the engineer group design uh, who's in charge of designing the part and so that's what that next letter or number re uh, designates and then after that you have the actual part number and so that's one that will pretty much stay constant for the specific part and you can have a part that's uh, for your car that you ordered and you got it and everything else can be different except for that one and it still might uh, work uh, after that you have the revision okay and so that was started off as a is what the part was and then every time they revised it from there it changed and so it would just go up in the alphabet so it would change from a to b to c to d and so on and then when they ran out of the letters they would just go a a a b a c and so forth and they would never use the letter i and so here's another quick breakdown of this uh, of uh, what we just talked about and the prefix codes and the main numbers and everything like that uh, so in the 50s and 60s you had just had letters and then that had changed as we were talking about so uh, as you can see here's some codes that changed 2010 is a and then uh, 2011 B and so forth and uh, so uh, listed here are some of the models of the cars we were talking about and then uh, on the far column is the design uh, engineer group. So here's one of the Manly connecting rods that's in the Terminator and as you know it also has the Manly part number on it but we're gonna go ahead and break this one down. So the 2 designated 2002, the R3 was for the Mustang and the V was for the Domestic Special Order Development Department. So how would you like to work for that department in Ford? That sounds kinda cool. But uh, and you see a lot of that on the Terminator and we'll show you some other parts. So that domestic special order engineering department shows up on a lot of these and here's a pulley bridge for example and if you look at the number there's that 2 for 2002 R3 Mustang and V there's that department again part number and revision. Okay so next let's talk about the map sensor or the manifold absolute pressure sensor that goes onto the supercharger and gets a reading down for your charge temperature. And so this one you can see the 2 for 2002, the R3 for Mustang and then you see A which was the Advanced Vehicle Technology Core Operations Department. Okay, so that's doing all the sensors and those kind of things. Now, I got a different map sensor sent to me, and it wouldn't verify the part exactly. It just gave these cross-reference service part numbers, and uh, it gave me, this was on Rock Autos where I got this, it gave me that there were about four alternate part numbers that this could be. And so, um, Looking at it, I figured, well, I might as well order it. It could be one of the original ones for the Mustang because it said it was a closeout thing, which is what they kind of do when they're running low on inventory and they're not going to replenish it with the older ones. And so uh, I decided to buy it and see how it was going to work. It did say it was compatible with the 0304 Cobra. And so uh, when I got it, you could see that the uh, part number on this is slightly different than what it showed on the Terminator Cobra. It did also look slightly different with a box on the top of it and the cage around the sensor itself was slightly different. And so you'll later find out that it is a revised part and used on different cars. And so let's break it down and see where this part actually came from. So according to my research, the A is 2010, A5 is the Lincoln MKS, which is a turbocharged EcoBoost car, and then A was the development department. There was the part number right after it, which actually is the same part number, the 9F479. 
which seems to be the most important part, and that's the manifold absolute pressure sensor for the Terminator Cobra. And here it is on Rock Auto. When I bought it, you can see the different ones available, and that CX2228 was the cross-reference number, saying that all those fit. And right here, it shows the 2R3Z 9F479AA number, which was on the original um, map sensor, and uh, right next to it, the new one. So whether they're compatible, um, <laughs> I guess I'll have to find out because uh, I bought this sensor as kind of a backup just to have on hand. Uh, they were making a big deal about it at VMP saying that the Terminator ones are not produced anymore and uh, according to this they are interchangeable It'd probably be the same or similar ones that you see on the Raptor you know the uh, EcoBoost Raptor and some of the turbocharged cars. So anyway, when you go into a Ford dealership and you ask them for that part, uh, this is what they'll give you. They obviously don't have the older parts in stock anymore, and uh, it appears that they'll just go off of that part number, the 9F479, and it should be compatible, just revised a little different. So anyway, put in the comments if you have ever got new parts like this with different part numbers that aren't for the Mustang. Maybe you'll have to go out to the garage now and check which part that you've been given and see what part it was initially designed for. <laughs> so. Uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, give it a thumbs up. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, guys.